Hi, my name is Troy Parfit, and I'm the author of The Devil and His Due, How Jordan Peterson Plagiarizes Adolf Hitler. In this video, you're going to see and hear more examples of Jordan Peterson copying from Adolf Hitler. Most of the Peterson quotes come from his two books, Maps of Meaning and Twelve Rules for Life. If you'd like the sources for the quotes, they're in The Devil and His Due. For this example set, I'm just going to give you the quotes without explanation, after which I'll offer some commentary about Jordan Peterson's reaction to the 2021 storming of the United States Capitol. Let's begin with the examples. Hitler, peoples with a great past, the great spirit of the creative power of the past. Peterson, culture was established by the spirit of great people in the past. Hitler, the great civilization of the past. Peterson, the great stories of the past. Hitler, Traditions of times past. Peterson, traditions of the past. Hitler, our cathedrals are witness to the glory of the past. Peterson, the glory of the past, the strength of the well-ruled kingdom. Hitler, Germany sees in you the pillars of an immortal, glorious past. Peterson, during times of increased unemployment or uncertain political structure, the call for the return to the glorious past therefore arises. Hitler, memory of the dead past. Peterson, Memories of the Past, the Dead Past. Hitler, Our Most Dim and Distant Past. Peterson, The Dimmest Reaches of the Past, that is the unimaginably distant past to us. Hitler, The Dim Shadows of the Past, the Dim Mist of a Thousand Years. Peterson, The Dim Mists of Time. Hitler, Mistakes Which Led to Downfall in the Past. Peterson, Mistakes They Made Knowingly in the Past. Hitler, we learned a great lesson in the course of these past years. Peterson, those who fail to learn from the past, doom themselves to repeat it. Hitler, from the past, we can learn only one lesson. Peterson, there is a lesson to learn from the Holocaust, and the lesson is, you're the Nazi. Hitler, German Vogue, remember what you are. Remember your past and the accomplishments of your fathers. Peterson, you remember the past, so you are prepared for the future. Hitler, History must not be studied merely with a view to knowing what happened in the past, but as a guide to the future. Peterson, memory is not a description of the objective past. Memory is a tool. Memory is the past's guide to the future. Hitler, the treasures of the past, the general treasury of human culture, is necessary to keep the memory of old achievements alive. Peterson, the treasures of the past, we must rediscover the values of our culture, veiled from us by our ignorance, hidden in the dusty treasure trove of the past, rescue them and integrate them into our own lives. Hitler, the two states, the German ship of state. Peterson, the two states, the great ship of state. Hitler, a state in the future order of world states. Peterson, the state, insofar as the state defined and brought order. Hitler, the strength of the state. Peterson, the strength of the state. Hitler, the rise of the Reich. Peterson, the rise of the state. Hitler, the National Socialist State will rise from the Bolshevik flames. Peterson, the exploratory process that gave rise to the state. Hitler, a state doomed to collapse. Peterson, the chaos of the collapsed state. Hitler, chaotic state, state of chaotic conflict. Peterson, chaotic state, chaotic state of conflict. Hitler, a state of international chaos. Peterson, a state of anxiety-provoking chaos. Hitler, Jewish world finance which transcends all state boundaries. Peterson, chaos is what extends, eternally and without limit, beyond the boundaries of all states. Hitler, pathological enemies of the state. Peterson, pathological operations of the state. Hitler, the dead authority of a dead state. Peterson, culture is always in a near dead-end state. Hitler, rebuilds a new German Reich. Peterson, they rebuild their state. Hitler, reconstruction of a state. Peterson, construction of a state. Hitler, we want to build a new state. Peterson, we build families and states and countries. Hitler, our ideal picture of the people's state. Peterson, the most ideal state possible. Hitler, the state which the spirit of the movement has created. Peterson, the spirit that founded the state. Hitler, strength to support the national spirit. Peterson, what shall I do to strengthen my spirit? Hitler, the establishment of a new national socialist people state. Peterson, towards establishment of a state, a spiritual kingdom. Hitler, in its organization, the state must be established on the principle of personality. Peterson, 
The state is therefore organization and personality. Hitler, the great military and industrial states. Peterson, the great machinery of state. Hitler, a state of progressive degeneration. Peterson, a degeneration of the state. Hitler, disintegration of the state. Peterson, this disintegration is the removal of experience from their socially determined state. Hitler, the final dissolution of the state. Peterson, dissolution seems to me to characterize the processes and bifurcated final state. Hitler, he wondered whether I was in a sound state of mind. Peterson, that's a state and a state of mind at the same time. Hitler, increased the strength of the Reich. Peterson, increased the strength of the state. Hitler, the strong are always the masters of the weak. Peterson, better to be strong than to be weak. Hitler, strength and assessment of character. Peterson, strength or integration of character. Hitler, he who avoids battles will never attain the strength to fight battles. Peterson, conserve your strength. You're in a war, not a battle, and a war is composed of many battles. Hitler, strengthen the fighting spirit. Peterson, strengthen your own spirit. Hitler, strength to stand up. Peterson, strength and daring to stand up. Hitler, Germany will grow stronger and stronger. Peterson, the fascist builds stronger and stronger walls. Hitler, faith is stronger in me today than ever before. Peterson, strong ideas produce profound displays of faith. Hitler, never losing faith in the great German Volk. Peterson, did Hitler lose faith in his own ability? No. Hitler, the courage of their convictions, their unbroken faith. Peterson, the courage of his convictions, the most courageous of faiths. Hitler, the whole of Germany must step forward and pledge its faith. Peterson, you step forward to take your place in the dominance hierarchy. Hitler, and you, my cadets, have the duty to step forth. One great aim can only be achieved step by step. Peterson, we don't know why the Holocaust came about. Don't even know what it is the people involved did or failed to do step by step. Even Hitler, how could Hitler fail to believe he was correct when everyone around him bowed to his orders? Okay, so that was about 50 examples. I've documented over 3,100 examples of Peterson plagiarizing Hitler, but the actual number would be much higher because he often repeats the plagiarism and orally plagiarizes Hitler at least once during almost every lecture, interview, and speech. Only, no one would ever suspect him of doing that because, well, who would do that? Of course, when I tell people that Peterson has plagiarized Hitler's written text, they don't believe me despite not having read Hitler's or Peterson's books. Although millions have bought 12 Rules for Life, I have to wonder how many have actually read it. Generally, Peterson's followers, or lobsters, don't strike me as being readers. Now, be honest, with this set of quotes, if I had reversed the names, that is, attributed Hitler's language to Peterson, and vice versa, in most instances, you would have been hard-pressed to identify the writer. Yes? If so, how could you rule out plagiarism? But then, how could you rule out plagiarism without critically engaging with at least a considerable chunk of the evidence? Saying that my claim seems unhinged, or sounds like BS, is not how you establish whether a proposition is valid. If you're presented with significant linguistic overlap between two writers' utterances, say, 50 times, let alone thousands of times, it could indicate plagiarism. And if one writer quotes praises, writes about, lectures about, and recommends books by and about the other writer, as Peterson does with Hitler, that should make the thousands of examples that feature similar style, content, and register all the more circumspect. However, as said Mark Twain, how easy it is to make people believe a lie, and how hard it is to undo that work again. Indeed, and Peterson's lie, or double lie, which is propped up by thousands of additional lies, is that he wants the best for people and is warning against the resurgence of fascism. If he were really warning of fascism, why, in the wake of the 2021 storming of the United States Capitol, has he failed to criticize Donald Trump, choosing instead to criticize Joe Biden for pledging to help women and ethnic minorities? Why has he argued that the event wasn't a coup, but merely a violent protest? I mean, hey, it's your democratic right to protest. By uttering death threats, beating up police, and being armed with guns, Molotov cocktails, and machetes? Why has Peterson remained silent on this protest's illegality and how it facilitated the deaths of five people? Why has he said nothing about the involvement of white supremacists, like the man photographed wearing a hoodie that read Camp Auschwitz? Auschwitz is one of Peterson's favorite subjects, 
Plus, he's warning us of fascism. So why would he not issue a statement condemning the man, who's obviously a neo-Nazi, and his act of sedition? Perhaps Peterson is too busy using Twitter to try and whip up hatred for the Canadian government for implementing regulations meant to reduce the spread of a lethal virus. How dare government staffers try to protect the people, like they hope to do through mass vaccination, and like they did with Bill C-16, which had nothing to do with compelled speech and everything to do with shielding a vulnerable group from discrimination. But back to the acts of terrorism meant to destroy democracy and install a dictator in the United States of America. According to The Independent, far-right radio host Alex Jones said that his company paid $500,000 to book the Ellipse, or the park across the street from the White House, for the Stop the Steal rally that preceded the insurrection. Jones claimed that someone in the White House asked him to lead the march to the Capitol. Alex Jones has promoted the white genocide conspiracy theory, which holds that Jews are plotting to make white people obsolete. Charlie Kirk, evangelical Christian and founder of Turning Point USA, said that his organization had sent to the Capitol 80-plus buses of patriots to fight for this president. Kirk promotes the cultural Marxism conspiracy theory, which proffers that Marxist theorists, including those from the Frankfurt School, who are often Jewish and anti-fascist, wish to dismantle Christian society and conservatism. Why hasn't Jordan Peterson criticized Alex Jones or Charlie Kirk? Because he likes them. Before his white supremacist friend, Lauren Southern, was deplatformed, Peterson said she shouldn't be deplatformed, just like Alex Jones shouldn't have been deplatformed. As for Charlie Kirk, he and Peterson have done at least two interviews together. Here's a picture from one of those interviews. You can see that Peterson is flashing an alt-right hand signal. In another interview, he and Kirk talked a lot about race, for example, fatherlessness in the black community. Regarding Donald Trump, Peterson has defended his policies and lavished him with praise. Jordan Peterson is not a fascist, but to comprehend what he really is, we need to remove the word not. He loves Donald Trump and has said that Trump is not stupid and makes effective use of spontaneous speech. This is precisely the same language he has used to describe Adolf Hitler. Some two and a half months before the storming of the Capitol, Trump told the Proud Boys to stand back and stand by. The Proud Boys are proud because they have white pride. And who else spoke about white pride, which he also called natural pride? Hitler. How many individuals understand that their natural pride in being members of so favored a nation arises from the greatness of the fatherland? Peterson. That would atone for your sinful nature and replace your shame with the natural pride of someone who has learned once again to walk with God in the garden. Concerning God in the garden, Peterson has referred to Hitler as God the Father, and Hitler wrote about walking about the garden of nature. Moreover, Peterson is forever recommending the book Ordinary Men by Christopher Browning about Hitler's order police, which were not really police, but rather death squads. Browning says that when Hitler wanted to commence the final solution, he instructed his underlings to turn Germany into a Garden of Eden. And while discussing ordinary men, Peterson said, Hitler didn't really give out directives precisely. He sort of hinted at what he might want, and then his minions would get together and, you know, lay out policies in accordance with what they thought were his wishes. Gosh, apart from war and the expansion of the Reich, what was it that Hitler wanted? What was another of his wishes? In The Devil and His Due... I reveal Peterson's hidden identity. But as Mark Twain observed, lies, once internalized, are hard to undo. If you're one of Peterson's lobsters, you can continue believing in his lies, doubtless many of you will, but know that when he says, stand up straight with your shoulders back, he's not giving you life advice about having better posture or navigating a difficult world. He's positioning you as someone who should stand back and stand by as someone who needs to take a rebel stand against the so-called radical left and obliterate democracy and plurality so we can live in a dictatorship and establish a Garden of Eden. This is why when he speaks, he shows images like this one. The slogan under the Imperial Eagle reads, In the end, there is victory. Note how Peterson paired this image with another of a victorious rioter or arsonist. That's supposed to be you, lobsters. He's sending you a signal just like Trump sent his white supremacist and QAnon mob a signal when he told them to march on the Capitol because in order to take back the country, they would need to show strength and be strong. Here's another Peterson picture. Hitler as a knight in shining armor, coupled with the anarchy symbol. 
Funny he should associate Hitler with anarchy, because he has spoken about Hitler in mayhem, saying that when the Nazis had a choice between winning the war and accelerating the mayhem, by which Peterson meant liquidating the Jews, quote, they picked to accelerate the mayhem, end quote. It's you, lobsters, who are supposed to engage in anarchy and choose mayhem. Like the insurrectionists at the U.S. Capitol, your duty is to tear the republic asunder. If you think what I'm saying is absurd, perhaps I can assume you're one of the crustaceans who really thought 12 Rules for Life was a self-help guide, and not a crypto-fascist instruction manual masquerading as a self-help guide. If so, I suggest another self-help guide, Mein Kampf, wherein you'll find advice that's oddly Petersonian. From A.H., you'll learn how the cornerstone of society is the individual. You'll get tips on how to become an individual who steers clear of the identity politics of the radical left. You'll come to understand that attending Jew-ridden universities is a waste of time, and that it's better to practice personal responsibility. Self-improvement begins with you and extends to your community. As Hitler explains, responsibility can and must be borne by the individual. Mein Kampf will teach you how to get your life in order, think of the order police, and confront the chaos by which Hitler meant the Jews. You can transform into an exploratory hero who, as Hitler says, can stand straight when thunder rolls, and you can slay the communist dragon. Sure, you might be arrested and imprisoned, like the terrorists in Washington, but as Peterson says, life is suffering, and the great stories of the past have more to do with developing character in the face of suffering than with happiness. Or, as Hitler says, we attach the highest importance to the development of character, and our young movement was meant to gather in all those who were suffering from profound anxiety and could find no peace, those who were unhappy and discontented. Ah yes, Hitler's discontented lobsters, tricked by an ersatz father figure and chronic liar. The ones who survived Hitler's wishes often believed his lies for the rest of their lives. To Peterson's lobsters, I ask, how long will you believe your father figure's lies? Thank you for listening and viewing, and feel free to subscribe.